Hello all YouTubers, I am Brother Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back into this Tropical Storm Fae live coverage for July 10th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, I would ask that every single one of you please smash that subscribe button and ring the bell notifications. Thank you guys so much for 600 subscribers. Let's get to our next goal of 700 subscribers and to our next long-term goal of the big 1,000. So please smash that subscribe button and ring the bell notifications as well as watching the whole video. Both of these things really do support my channel and, you know, watching the whole video, it's a win-win. You know, you, you get the best for the content and I get the watch time, which I really do need for my channel. And please also like and share this video. Thank you. Now, let's get on with today's video. And today, as you may have guessed, we're going to be tracking Tropical Storm Fay live as it is zeroing in on the Mid-Atlantic coastline. As of the latest 8 a.m. advisory, it currently has sustained winds of 50 miles an hour. Pressure has dropped now to 999 millibars. I believe it was 1,002 millibars in the 5 o'clock update. Even though the winds have stayed the same, the pressure has dropped. So definitely some gustier conditions and it is moving north at 10 miles per hour. If you look at the latest track, you can see that you can see how we have tropical storm warnings for the Connecticut coastline, uh, Long Island, as well as just southeast of New York City, the Jersey coastline, and now the Delaware coastline has been added. Uh, so we now have a tropical storm warning from the Delaware coastline, Jersey coastline, uh, Long Island, and Connecticut coastlines as well. As this tropical storm will be making a near or close landfall on the Jersey shore, all right, and then moving up right through New York City, all right, the center could potentially move right over New York City and then into Vermont into the Northeast, and eventually becoming a post-tropical depression once it uh, crosses there into Canada. All right, but as of right now, there's a 50 mile an hour tropical storm. This will probably be the strongest it's gonna get. Um, we'll see because it's still moving north. I mean, it's not making that east turn yet. Um, you can see the radius of all this orange area where we have those tropical storm force winds. Now encapsulates the, uh, where Ocean City and the Delaware coastline are now in an orange shape, which means that we are seeing tropical storm force winds currently. All right, so again, there's another look at that. Uh, in terms of the exact strength, again, 50 miles an hour wind gusts, potentially in the near, near and east of the storm center, 65 mile per hour wind gusts, even though the sustained winds are currently 50 miles per hour. Um, then by the time it passes up through New York, the winds have already dropped to 40, but it could even be a tropical storm as it moves inland, so that'll be something to watch. By the time it crosses into Canada, 35 mile an hour winds with wind gusts, still 45 miles per hour um, once it moves into Canada. Then after that, I mean, they will be out of here. This isn't the slowest moving system, but it's not the fastest moving either. It's moving at about an average speed, again, about 10 miles per hour. Right, we're we're going to be getting to the live radar as well. Um, again, here is your region right here where we could see uh, winds of 39 miles per hour plus. Um, but anywhere in that lime green or a yellow shading and orange and red, that's your area where you have your higher chance of seeing some tropical storm force winds. So as you can see, right where near the storm center is, obviously that's where we have the highest probabilities because that's where the storm center is and near just east of that. But... Even heading through, you know, Philly, New York, Connecticut, still we can see 20, 30, even past 40% chance to see tropical storm force winds. And keep in mind, too, the waves are going to be very high, as well as uh, we can even see like a foot of st a storm surge in some spots, maybe about 10 or 12 inches of water level rise from the ocean, too. Um, additional rainfall, 2 to 4 inches, although it definitely depends on the model you look at. This is from the National Hurricane Center. Um, in that dark green, two to four, and outside of that, in that lime green, that's where you can see one to two. But any of these locations can see locally higher amounts because, again, this is a tropical entity, and we know that these bands, these bands can work their way through, and they can have different uh, varying levels of strength. Um, if we look at the ocean water temperature anomalies, again, sea surface temperature anomalies are well above average. All right, from the North Carolina coast up through the Jersey Shore, uh, when we look at the actual ocean temperatures. You see that it has just recently left the area of 80 degree water, which is why this isn't really going to strengthen all that much more. I think it's going to hold its strength. I think it's going to remain um, at the same strength that it is now up until landfall, then it'll start weakening. So I think it's reached its peak here, but it's going to be staying at the peak for a while. So ocean temperatures in the upper 70s, we so about uh, 77, 78 here for the Jersey and Delaware shore. Um, as for where the lowest sitting right now, it's sitting right about here. So again, it's just left that yellow area. So it has just recently left that area of 80 degree waters. Now, looking at the um, Hurricane Hunters here, and they've flown into the storm, actually. And I can actually open this into a new tab so you guys can see it a little bit enlarged. Um, you can see that these orange areas mean 
And hurricane hunters have found some winds of 50 to 55 knots. Uh, but generally, that, that's a little over. Technically, that would pretty much be, that would mean 50 mile an hour winds. So it is finding winds of 50 to 55 knots. Like if they found winds of 40 to 45 knots in a storm, the storm will probably be at 40 miles an hour in the next update. So since they found winds of 50 to 55 knots, that means that the storm probably has winds of 50 miles an hour because, again, these are peak 10 second average of flight level wind speeds. So it all, of course, it depends on the level they fly at as well. You can see the Hurricane Hunter aircraft is flying right towards um, Wildwood there. That's where the direction is pointing at. Um, so they'll probably do like another loop around the storm. And you can see the little eye here that we have. All right, and then all the rain on that eastern side, that's going to get funneled all right, into the Jersey and Delaware shoreline as well as parts of eastern Maryland as well. All right. Uh, rainfall could get a lot. We're going to look at the models and see how much rain they predict. Um, looking at the satellite imagery, again, I would almost say this kind of looks subtropical, but I mean, it definitely looks very organized. The only thing is, here's your area of circulation, but then look, look where all the, the moisture is. It's all on the north side of it, right? You know, you would think if it's a little bit more organized, you know, we would have our center here and then your rain would be right, right about here, all your cold cloud tops. But that is not the case, but still very uh, nice, nice looking tropical storm here, especially for the, this is making it to 38 degrees north latitude. So we're talking about pretty far north here. Um, you can see that the rain and cold cloud tops making its way through. All right. Actually, the rain has just recently started here. This could be going on for a few hours at least. Um, looking at the radar here, let's get a nice little fresh look at radar. And here's the Weather Channel radar. And you can see that the rain's already, again, it's starting to make its way through Philly, Wilmington. Uh, not quite made to Baltimore yet. D.C., you're not going to be seeing much out of this. I think Baltimore does have a better chance. But you look down towards the shoreline. Uh, Delaware Beach is the Jersey Shore up through Atlantic City. It is very heavy. We are seeing very heavy rain right now. And actually, I do want to take a look at it because Bethany Beach actually now has seven alerts. I mean, as I was setting up this video not so long ago, they actually had um, they actually had five alerts. So we have, a, again, tropical storm warning is in effect for Bethany Beach, as well as a flash flood warning. We have a special marine warning, of course, a tropical weather statement, a flash flood watch, and a riptide statement. So a lot of a lot of different alerts there for Bethany Beach, but again, um, storm surge now potentially two feet above ground, and and this could be especially dangerous because I'll be showing you later in the video because the strongest winds could be coming at high tide, and that is very bad news, especially uh, for the Delaware shoreline. There, I did look, and I'll be showing you some graphics later about why the and how the strongest winds could be coming at high tide, and that is very bad news. So. Looking at the uh, National Weather Service radar here, I, actually, let me see if I can zoom in. There we go. Um, so looking at the National Weather Service radar, again, you can see how it's kind of it making like a little left turn. All right, we're starting to see the rain push inland. Um, and where it's at now, like the rain will be, won't be getting much farther inland than it is now. Because from here, it's going to make a north turn. And the National Hurricane Center will bend to the east a little bit, depending on when that happens. So maybe you make like a turn like this, or maybe it'll go more like this. Um, but I think it's going to get really close to land. All right, I can't really, I can't wait for the eleven o'clock update. Um, but you can see that these very heavy bands of rain. We we saw one push through. All right, here's the first one. All right, there's the next one, and the next one will be coming after that. So does it? I think it could even make it to that ninety-five quarter. I mean, Philly's starting to get some rain, although it's not it's not too heavy. But Philly is starting to get some rain. Uh, same with Wilmington here. Um, one hour precipitation. All right, if you look down the short. Is very, we had this very heavy band of little patch of rain there. One and a half to two inches of rain per hour. Um, that's just making its way now. Um, right near Lewis and Rehoboth Beach. That's where that area is moving right there. Um, there's a yellow and orange patch right there. But even outside of that, even in, anywhere in that green area, half inch to even an inch plus of rain every single hour. So that's definitely going to make, that's definitely going to leave a mark here. Um, how much precipitation have we seen total? Our storm total precipitation so far, how much have we seen? Um, and it's amazing how we have seen almost two and a half to three inches of rain for the Delaware shore and even Wildwood so far. And it's, that is just as astronomical. And you can see where the storm has moved through over the water here. Some parts we've seen five plus inches of rain. This looks like it's just off the coast of Maryland and Delaware. But you can look at look at over the water down here where Faye has moved through as well. Six inches of rain just in since the rain has started here. Um, obviously, it's just started for, you know, like North Delaware and Philly. So you guys have seen a trace, but you see what could potentially be coming here. 
All right, this rank could be moving inland. And the models, we're going to be taking a look at the models now because the models do say some very different things. So going to the high resolution model, all right, you can see that the low, they think that the low pressure at 8 a.m. is actually making its way on the Maryland shoreline. And you can see the low could be sitting um, right on the Maryland and Delaware border there, and, and that rain is going to keep falling. So we're going to be moving inland through today. I think a couple inches of rain is certainly possible, at least for the mid-Atlantic air and the mid-Atlantic coast. Then it moves up, and then the low pressure moves, literally the low center moves right over New York City here, all right, as we head into our 11 p.m. All right, 11 p.m. tonight, and then by midnight, it's moving through. We got some spy showers moving through the northeast, and it's all set and done. So how much precipitation are we talking about here? Well, potentially another two to four inches. Just some spots that haven't gotten necessarily hit yet, like North Jersey and, you know, North, North, North Delaware or even parts of Central Jersey as well. So still two to four inches of rain, definitely a lot here. And if we look, if we take a look at these sustained winds, all right, you can see that widespread here, uh, we could be seeing sustained winds of, you know, 20, 30 miles per hour plus. So this is, um, this is 8 a.m. You can see heading through time here. The winds do keep generating. I mean, Long Island, we can see some tropical storm force winds as well. That's why you're under that, that TS warning. All right, but this low will be moving, again, not that fast, but it will be moving north as we head throughout the day. And eventually, by overnight, it will be moving through North Jersey and New York and Connecticut. So that's when you guys will be seeing it. But luckily, I think, I'm not saying it's going to be less rain for you guys in New York and Connecticut, but I think by by time it moves that, because it's going to be moving past 40 degrees north latitude by the time it heads towards New York City. So... I think it could lose a lot of it that 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 heat that it's really seeing. So it might help to weaken the storm a little bit, but that doesn't mean the rainfall is going to be any less. Even when it becomes remnants, as after it moves to New York City and it becomes remnants, um, we could still be seeing uh, a couple inches of rainfall um, in those heavy in those heavier bands. So this is where tropical storm phase is sitting right now. If we look at the wind gust again, here's where it gets interesting. For Hobbit Beach here, we're going to see wind gust at 11 a.m. For the European model, wind gusts to 47 miles per hour. And if you look at Rehoboth Beach, look at when your high tide is at noon, when we can still be seeing those winds gusting close to 50 miles an hour, and that's at noon. So that's why that's your unlucky, you're unlucky there for the Delaware shore as well as Wildwood, even Atlantic City, because your strongest winds are gonna be coming right when high tide is. Even like Wildwood there, wind gusts are gonna get pretty close. 50 miles per hour and as we head through time here you notice how the how strongest winds do make their way northward so as as does the low center and even close to you know even philly we can still be seeing wind gusts past 35 miles an hour and with that rain it's just gonna be kind of relentless here but as we head through overnight though we can still be seeing the winds um then the winds start turning from another direction so look at 11 p.m so now like the bay side not the atlantic coast side but the bay side of New Jersey could start to get a little bit of coastal flooding now as well. The wind's coming out of the west here, so for the western bay coast right here in Jersey, uh, southeast of Maurice River, wind gusts could be still going to 40 miles per hour um, overnight. The wind will be definitely tapering off after the rain. So even though this is overnight, the wind's still kind of gusty, 20, 25. Then by the time we wake up tomorrow, all will be peaceful for the most part. We can still be seeing some rain from another trough system, but as for the tropical storm, we'll be gone by then. But how about that rain? The rainfall totals according to the European model. Well, we got a couple. We got a couple areas of bullseye according to the European model. Basically, the European model kind of targets the whole state of Delaware here. Potentially three to five inches of rainfall, as well as eastern Maryland right here. Um, but right there where the Delaware Memorial Bridge is, Delaware and New Jersey, um, definitely maybe four and four and a half inches, um, as well as for the Delaware Shore. But even outside of that, look at this area of uh, potentially a couple inches of rain does extend all the way up into the Northeast. So the European model, very accurate model, does actually pretty much target the whole state of Delaware in at least three inches of rainfall. And this will be, this again, this rainfall will be moving throughout the day. We'll be moving uh, through um, the Mid-Atlantic and up through the Northeast here. Um, let's actually get another, um, since this is a live coverage video, we're gonna be uh, refreshing the radar here and kind of taking our next look at it and see how the storm center has really evolved here. So again, Let's take a look at the radar. And looking at this storm from a zoomed out perspective, you can see how we still have actually some pans of rain as off the coast of the Carolinas. 
So, but that's not really tied to the storm system. I mean, it is, but it's looking well behind. Um, you can see, look at this. This looks like a very a healthy tropical system here. Look at these bands of rain that are just making their way inland here. It almost looks like it's coming in an angle that Sandy came in. Not necessarily. Um, Sandy, like, you know, Hurricane Sandy kind of went out towards the ocean a little bit more, so to speak. And it kind of went in and then curved back into the shore. Um, this storm is kind of hovering near the coast the whole time. But still, the fact that the angle that it's coming in, the potential landfall, um, is almost similar to Hurricane Sandy. Um, but again, let's, let's, uh, let's, play, let's play the animated radar loop here. And I want to zoom in on... Um, New, on uh, New Jersey and, and especially the Delaware Shore because we've been getting hammered here. You can see the yellows and orange, even a lot of oranges and reds, so very, very heavy rainfall. It's just recently moved through Lewis and Georgetown, and it's very relentless. I mean, we've had flash flood warnings here because several inches of rain have already fallen. And don't worry. Dover, Winslow, Philadelphia, Deptford, Wilmington, it's coming for you. All right, let's take a look at that future radar now. And... As you can see, as we head throughout the day, watch this area of oranges moves, it moves its way right in through Deptford, right through Wilmington, a very heavy band of rain potentially. All right, just, just similar to the one that just hit the, uh, the Delaware and Jersey shoreline, could be making its way through. Look at this, Wilmington right here, right at noon. Very heavy bands of rainfall. Um, it needs to be dropping inches of rain per hour, even though some of the bands may not last an hour before the next band comes in. But look at this, look how it just refills. That area of yellow arrives in Wilmington at 11 o'clock, right? All right? I want you to focus right in here. So the area of yellow moves in, and, and when it looks like it's done, it regenerates. Another area of red regenerates, and there you go. Then it sits there and starts spinning. Then the afternoon, I think it turns into more um, kind of spotty, uh, some scattered thunderstorms, although Philly, Ben Salem, Central Jersey, you guys are still in it. Uh, but we could still be seeing some very heavy rainfall through the early afternoon. And by late afternoon into the evening, I'd say for um, Delaware and South Jersey, I think it's going to start clearing out a little bit late afternoon, even though we can still be seeing some isolated storms. And then heading through North Jersey, it'll be still lasting through the afternoon for you guys too. So, but again, very heavy rainfall uh, nonetheless, and this is a storm to be taken very seriously because winds could be gusting past 50, 60 miles per hour um, mm -hmm. in some very isolated spots. Even when we get those heavier bands, um, we could definitely see someone gust passing 50 miles an hour. Um, this is a, this is a, again, very dangerous storm system and take, prepare like you would for a hurricane. I hope you guys are already prepared. This isn't really a time to prepare. Um, but it's just now starting there for Wilmington, Philadelphia, the I-95 quarter. But for you guys there in the Jersey shoreline, um, and the Delaware shoreline, it is, you know, it's, it's, it's already started for you guys. And we're going to be taking a look at the European model now. So as the storm moves north, cause I wanted to take a look at the European because they're calling for almost... Sort of like a Delaware landfall here. So interesting how the low moves just to the west here. And you see it comes right on shore, Delaware. There's your very heavy band of rainfall. So could we see landfall in Delaware or even south, extreme South Jersey? Possibly. And then, then some very heavy bands of rainfall moves or make their way through. Kind of hits Delaware and then kind of bounces off and rides right up the Jersey shoreline. All right, it rides right up the Jersey shore. Then it heads into North Jersey and then into New York City as we head through overnight tonight to 2 o'clock tomorrow morning. But again, the European model, as I showed you guys, uh, as I showed you guys earlier, a very heavy rainfall according to the European model for uh, Delaware and even parts of Jersey as well. Even southeastern Pennsylvania can't run off some heavier rain. But look at this, North Delaware, one of bullseyes there. But again, 5.3 inches of rain is possible, uh, as well as uh, South Central Delaware down to the beaches, maybe four or five inches of rain as well. So. I mean, this is, a, this is a very dangerous setup, and we know that only a few inches of rain can sweep a person off their feet. And keep in mind, we got potentially a foot or two of storm surge as well. Don't, don't forget about the storm surge, especially if your house is sitting near the beach here. If you're sitting a few miles inland, you should be protected from the surge, all right, but not from the rainfall. It, that's if you're like miles inland, though. All right, but if you're, if you're near the beach, you definitely want to take those precautions because um, obviously the worst is here, and hopefully you already took those precautions, but... I mean, it's really, it's really never too late until the storm's actually over to, um, to really get those preparations in place, whether it's going to the highest level of your house, maybe do some, some very last-minute sandbagging if you happen to live um, in New York City because luckily we'll be getting, hitting you guys till later. So before I go, let's just take one last look at the radar here. I'll, I'll give it a little refresh, and we'll take one last look um, at the Weather Channel radar and I think the National Weather Service radar as well. So here's the Weather Channel radar here, and it just amazes me because... We usually never really see tropical storm warnings up 
up this way. I mean, it doesn't really happen too much where you get like a Choco system to directly hit us this way. So this is very exciting to track here. Um, and your latest figure right here shows Georgetown, Arthur Atlantic City is widespread area here, very heavy rain. We even have another uh, slightly, a little heavier band as well. Um, moving through central Delaware, uh, as well as, uh, you know, central and western Jersey. And again, as we head through the day here, here's that very heavy band of rain I was just talking about. Moves right through uh, Wilmington here and moves right through Philadelphia. And then we get, maybe have some heavier bands coming behind that. We might even have some rain starting to, like, to come through, coming from the northeast direction. Kind of like that, basically what you call it, that, like the wraparound of a tropical system here. All right, so let's take a look. I want to take a look at like the rainfall that we've actually had. Um, yeah, past 24 hour precipitation here. Um, just to take a look at the precipitation that we've been seeing in some spots. Um, when you look at the, you know, South Jersey and Eastern Delaware, the fact that we've seen again, like two and a half, up to four inches of rainfall already uh, for, for the coastline here. I mean, that is just, that's just really, I mean, that's just really like, I mean, it's amazing, but it's also like, you know, devastating because we know even though tropical storms aren't all bad, that they do have to clean out the ocean a little bit. They, we are in a slight drought, but I think the drought is more in the northeast than it is the mid-Atlantic, but we are in a very slight drought. But, again, there it is. I mean, Lewis, we've seen three inches of rain. According to the Weather Channel, the past 24 hours, uh, um, estimated radar picked up precipitation. Even that dark green, though, that's where we've seen an inch plus of rainfall. So Dover points south here, there's Salisbury and Chincoteague and Assateague. We've seen an inch plus of rainfall so far. So... Let's take one last look real quick at the um, National Weather Service radar. It's been great tracking this storm live with you guys. And hopefully, you just bring the bell notifications again so you guys can stay tuned when I track, track our upcoming tropical storms and hurricanes this hurricane season. Uh, and you can see, again, very heavy rainfall uh, making its way um, onto the Jersey Shore and Delaware Shore. We're talking about 40, 45 DBZs on the radar, which is pretty far up there. Um, again, one-hour rainfall totals could even get one and a half to one and a half to two inches of rain plus per hour. Um, and again, we've seen inches of rain. We have flash flood warnings for the uh, Delaware Shore and the Jersey Shore. And more rain is still to come, a couple inches possibly. Um, and even maybe possibly up to a few inches of rain is still to come along the I-95 quarter where you really haven't started, where you really haven't seen uh, necessarily the storm yet. So that is it for today's video, guys. I am the weather dude signing off till next time. Thank you for tuning into this live coverage. Stay safe.